Welcome back to Mason Talks. So all offseason, Andrew Barry has talked about how he wants to be aggressive. He wants to be looked at as an aggressive general manager for the Cleveland Browns. He wants to improve this team in any way, shape, or form. Whether that be through the draft or the trade market or, of course, spending big bucks in NFL free agency. And it looks like Andrew Barry is going to be doing just that. Today is Monday, March 16th, and Andrew Barry has already made three massive signings for the Cleveland Browns. Are they going to be good? Are they going to turn out great? Who knows? But at least he's spending some of the cap space. At least he's spending some of that money. The players that the Cleveland Browns have signed are former Atlanta Falcons tight end Austin Hooper. The Browns signed Austin Hooper to a $44 million contract over four years. The contract will be giving Austin Hooper $23 million guaranteed. And that deal made him the highest paid tight end in the National Football League. The Browns later went on to sign former Tennessee Titans right tackle Jack Conklin to a three-year, $42 million deal. And the Browns also would later sign backup quarterback Case Keenum to a three-year, $18 million contract. $18 million for Case Keenum. That's crazy. But I want to talk about I want to talk about all these moves. And I think it makes sense to start with the first one and probably the most significant move, Austin Hooper. So going into this offseason, we heard a lot about some of the Browns' problems. And the problems that a lot of people talked about, including myself, were things like the offensive line or linebackers after you parted ways with Christian Kirksey and Joe Schobert. People also talked about safeties. You had to get some safeties. But I think a lot of people were starting to forget about the tight end position. And if you look at the Cleveland Browns tight end room before the Austin Hooper signing, it was looking pretty bad. It was looking like a bad time. I mean, look at who the Cleveland Browns had as their tight ends last season. You had David and Joku for part of the year. David Njoku spent most of the season injured, and when he wasn't injured, when he was fully healthy and ready to go, he was beefing with his head coach, Freddie Kitchens. And from the looks of it and from what some of the insiders said, David Njoku was starting to become a sort of locker room cancer. I know that he's 23. I know that David Njoku has a lot of potential. But going into this offseason, looking at David Njoku and saying, hey, that's our tight end of the future... It didn't make me feel great. I'm starting to lose confidence in David Njoku. And then if you look at some of the other guys we had, we had Demetrius Harris, who was an absolute, just utter failure by the John Dorsey regime. You had a guy like Pharaoh Brown, who was a pure blocking tight end. You had a guy like Ricky Seals-Jones, who was average at best. The Cleveland Browns didn't really have any tight ends, and that was a massive issue. I mean... Look at two of the most important people in this franchise right now. Your head coach, Kevin Stefanski, and your starting quarterback, Baker Mayfield. If you start with Kevin Stefanski, one of the big things that people point to in terms of his offensive style and his offensive play calling is the fact that he likes to run a lot of sets with two tight ends. I think it's called, what, 12 personnel? Kevin Stefanski likes to run a lot of two tight end plays. He did it a lot in Minnesota with, I believe it was Irv Smith Jr. and Kyle Rudolph. He did it a lot, and he did it successfully. And since he was so successful with the two tight end sets, it would make sense that coming over to the Cleveland Browns, he would want to run something similar with this team. And, you know, that sounds great in theory, but then going into this offseason, you kind of had to look and say, hey, Kevin Stefanski running a two tight end set could become an issue because the Browns didn't even really have one. (laughs) They didn't really have one tight end that you could be confident in. I wasn't confident in anybody that I just listed, especially not David Njoku, one of the most inconsistent players on this team. So the fact that 
you open free agency by signing one of the free agent market's best tight ends, Austin Hooper, to a long-term contract with a lot of money, I felt pretty good about that one. I'm pretty happy about the Austin Hooper signing. Austin Hooper is a very good tight end. He's not in the top tier. You know, he's not he's he, he's not on the same level as guys like Travis Kelsey or George Kittle, but he's still a really good tight end. I think he was a pro bowler last year. And, you know, I know that pro bowls don't really mean anything, but at least he was pretty, you know, far above average. He had a really good season. He had over 700 yards. He had six touchdowns. He was one of the Falcons' best pass catchers. He had over, I think he had over 90 receptions, or no, 90 targets from Matt Ryan and only like one drop all season. When you look at Austin Hooper, it just seems like he's a really good, really young, really consistent tight end. And that's something that would be really important for this Browns team going forward with Kevin Stefanski. And it's also really important going forward with Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield needs some tight ends to throw to. If you look at Baker Mayfield in college, Baker Mayfield was a really, really good college quarterback, probably because he had a really good tight end named Mark Andrews that he could throw to consistently. In Baker Mayfield's first season, David and Joku played pretty good. They also had a pretty consistent backup, Darren Fells. They were both good, solid tight ends. And Baker Mayfield was successful. And then you look at Baker Mayfield's second professional season. He had no tight ends. And he kind of fell off a little bit. He was not nearly as efficient in year two in the red zone as he was in year one. And I think a big part of that is due to the fact that he didn't have any big body tight ends to throw to. And now he does. Now he has Austin Hooper. And I'm really excited to see how that plays out. I think Baker Mayfield to Austin Hooper can be a really scary duo for the rest of the NFL. So for that signing, pretty happy. Two thumbs up for Andrew Barry. I'm excited to see how that one turns out. And then later on in the day, the Cleveland Browns announced that they had signed right tackle Jack Conklin to a three-year $42 million deal, $30 million of it fully guaranteed, and $20 million will be, I think I think he's making $20 million of the deal in the 2020 season. So it's a kind of front-loaded contract. And when you look at the Jack Conklin signing, I think that that was something the Browns had to do. I mean, as I listed before, everybody knew offensive line was one of the biggest problems in terms of this team. I mean, going into this offseason, you only really had two offensive linemen you could be confident in, J.C. Treader and Joel Batonio. The rest of the offensive line was an utter mess. Greg Robinson. I mean, the dude is supposed to be your left tackle, the person who's supposed to protect your starting quarterback, and he's getting caught at the U.S.-Mexico border with like 157 pounds of marijuana. Never a good look. Right guard. We still don't know who the right guard is. It could be Wyatt Teller. It could be somebody totally new. We don't know. Right tackle. Last year it was Chris Hubbard. I hate Chris Hubbard. He's one of my least favorite NFL players ever. He was so absurdly average. The Browns' offensive line stunk last year. In 2018, the Browns' offensive line was ranked second by Pro Football Focus. In 2019, it dropped to 23rd. I think the offensive line's failures were a big reason why Baker Mayfield struggled so much. He didn't have anybody to protect him. And signing Jack Conklin, it's a good start. It's definitely a good start. He can be a good, consistent offensive lineman for this team. But the key word in that phrase is a good start, because it's just the start. The Browns still have to go out and get a right guard. They still have to go out and get a left tackle in the NFL draft. But starting off that offensive line resurgence with Jack Conklin, that's a really good start. He's going to be making a lot of money, but... At least you can look at him and trust him far more than you could trust a guy like Chris Hubbard. So I'm into that signing as well. And then the the third signing. The third signing was backup quarterback Case Keenum. Now, this was the most perplexing deal to me because I understand why you would want to have Case Keenum on this team. Baker Mayfield needed a good, strong, solid backup. 
somebody that could, you know, be behind him on the depth chart, be a good veteran mentor, and also somebody who has experience in the Kevin Stefanski system. Kevin Stefanski was, I believe it was Case Keenum's uh, quarterback's coach in the year that Case Keenum went on that crazy run with the Vikings, getting him to the playoffs. So Case Keenum has some sort of experience with the head coach. So it makes sense. It's a sensible, you know, backup quarterback. He'll be able to do the job, all that. But I was a little bit perplexed with the fact that the Browns signed him to a three-year, $18 million deal. Now, I'm not a genius. I'm not an NFL GM. I don't know too much about the Browns' finances. But $18 million over three years seems like a lot of money to be paying your backup quarterback. And maybe it'll turn out really well. Maybe he'll end up being the guy that helps, you know, turn Baker Mayfield's career back in the right direction. Maybe he'll be a great veteran that we always hear about in the in the you know press conferences, press clippings from Baker Mayfield. Maybe that'll all turn out fine and dandy. But at the moment, it's kind of hard to judge it because he's simply going to be a backup quarterback. Hopefully he doesn't see the field too much. And he's going to be making $18 million. So that one's a little bit a little bit more perplexing. But overall, I would say. Pretty solid first, you know, first few hours of free agency for Andrew Barry. Really like the Austin Hooper deal. I'm happy with Jack Conklin. Still have a lot of work to do on that offensive line. And I think that Case Keenum's a good fit for this team. But let me know in the comments, what do you think of these three moves? What do you think of guys like Austin Hooper, Jack Conklin, and Case Keenum? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.